Hello. Hi, <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. Can you please pronounce your first name? Yes, my first name is Pratiksha. Pratiksha. Okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just reading it, I was like, I'm going to have her say that because I didn't. Yeah, no, I heard that. I was like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> that makes sense. I go by Premier Art, but my first name is Pratiksha. It means waiting. I was born two weeks late. Pratiksha. Okay, awesome. <laughs> and then yeah. where are you located? So I live in Austin, Texas. Oh, okay. I was not expecting that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, if you could just kind of give a little bit of a short introduction of anybody who might not know you so we can get to know who you are. Totally. Um, so my name is Pratiksha and I live in Austin. I have been doing art full time since July now. Uh, so about 10 months. Before that, I was in sales for like five years. So it was a really drastic and big jump, uh, but it's been really fun so far. I focus on pop art, so a lot of portrait work, and then also abstract art, and didn't think to take it seriously at first. Like, I don't have any education or formal, like, background in art. I learned it as a hobby, so self-taught, and I uh, started to take it more seriously when people reach out to me uh, to, like, purchase some of my paintings or commission a piece so yeah so what was the tipping point that took you from being from a uh, hobby to professional artist you say yeah um that's a good question I would say it was like a truly deep dissatisfaction with my job <laughs> okay like, I did sales for five years and there was a lot of it that I really loved um I was with one company for four years and it was really great but I remember getting to a point where I was like, okay, like I know what the next one to three years would look like here. So maybe I'll try a different sales gig and get reinvigorated. So I joined another sales company and we were building an office from zero to 30 people. And we were able to do that. But at the end of it, I was like, it, when I should have been the happiest, I remember being like, oh, wow, like, this is kind of it. Like, <laughs> it's a different job, yes, but it's kind of all the same shit. And if I want to make a change, then it should probably be now. And uh, yeah, that's, that's when I took the leap. Oh my gosh, that's, it's amazing though that you were in sales, just because I think that gives you such a leg up in the art world. Like a lot of artists come in and they're so like antisocial and like not wanting to talk to people very much. And so I can just tell by like immediately meeting you, you're, you're like, you're just like, hi, I'm here. Like, and I love it. <laughs> no, yeah, like I, there are definitely parts of it where I was like, oh, like, thank God I have this experience, like getting used to rejection. That's something that I think most artists have to get used to and what I deal with all the time. But being, like being in sales, you're normally rejected 98% of the time anyway. So, <laughs> so yeah, I see a lot of that like creeping in a little bit, but yeah. Could you talk just a little bit more about that? How like maybe you've got projected in the past and how like you've basically gotten like a hard skin or a tough skin about it and maybe how you've gotten rejected in the art world and it just doesn't bother you as much or how you deal with it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so when I was in sales, I started off as uh, a rep and when, and it was phone sales. So you're calling a bunch <laughs> of people, like you're making a hundred dials a day and you're trying to get them to talk to you and you're trying to get them to give you a credit card. And it gets to the point where if you're uncomfortable, like that's okay. You could, you could take your own like steps to, to ease into it. But at some point or another, like your manager is going to come up to you and be like, Hey, like, if you don't start closing things, like you're not going to have your job. And that's where you kind of have to take your emotions out of it and be like, Hey, this isn't, this isn't like, um, a personal feat. This is like, this is happening with your business or whatever sales you're doing. Like, this is what's happening. This is what we could provide. Why don't you at least hear what I have to say? You could decide whether or not something you want to do. And when I started looking at sales a little less personally and a little bit more professionally that helped me out. So when I talk to a business out here or a client here, it's not like, oh, like this is a personal like goal that I have to get your money or to like get my art into your place. It's just like, hey, this is what I have to offer. If that matches what you guys are looking for right now, then that's awesome. And if not, then I could send you to another artist. Like I'll recommend you, Andrea, and just be like, she's <laughs> incredible. And she does more like 
animal work that's mural really stuff. Big. Yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. Like, hey, like, why don't you reach out to her instead? So having an open mind of you, like, not everything needs to mean so much, and you don't need to, like, get everyone's business. Just do the best you can and be honest with what you have. Yeah, that's so true. It's just taking the emotion out of it. And, you know, as females, I think we're just, we tend to be more emotional and yeah. not not to like generalize everyone, but we just, we do. And, you know, anytime uh, you get rejected, you kind of take it as like a personal hit. And just recently in the past couple of years, I've realized that like, or I've read it in a book or something and it was like, you are not your art. Like you are not like your self worth is not tied up into whatever you're painting, you know? And so yeah. I think just knowing that, and like, if someone doesn't like that, that's not you, like you mm -hmm. are not your art. Like you are your own person. You're, you're nice and all these other things, but like with the paint and you are two separate things. And so if you can just like separate those in your mind and really deal with that as like, as like a business exchange, it's just, it's just so much easier yeah. to, yeah, to like recommend people or, you know, not do a painting or whatever. It's like healthier too, almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it would be a lot of stress to just like think of everything as a personal attack or like rejection. Just be like, oh, like I got denied. Therefore my art isn't good enough. Like that would just be a lot to take in all the time. So positive yeah. self-talk is definitely something that I think Every yeah. practice. Yeah, for sure. And like anytime anybody like gets rejected and they kind of feel bad about it, they'll come to me and be like, oh, I didn't get this job or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that customer is not meant for you. Yeah. Like you're going to have a customer, like you don't want to be vanilla. Like vanilla is okay, but like everybody likes vanilla, but you want to be like chocolate swirl with raspberry. Like yeah, cause somebody, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. cause somebody is, that's going to be like their jam that they order every single time and they don't touch vanilla. Like you need totally. to like appeal to those people. But you, I mean, if you're, uh, if somebody likes strawberry only, like you're not going to appeal to them kind of a thing. Yeah. I'm just kind of like relating like it like, like you'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You'll be <laughs> okay there are millions of pill billions of people in the world so it's fine it's just finding your customer okay awesome well I love having this discussion with someone who is so experienced with sales so my next question what is your typical work day how many hours do you spend painting yeah so this may be a frustrating answer but like it always changes it's like it's always going to be different I make a to-do list and depending on what I'm doing at the time, if I'm making a bunch of commission pieces or if I'm working for, uh, like if I'm looking to try to close a client who wants a few murals like in their spot, I'll be designing a lot. Or I don't know if I'm working on my own personal series, like I'm just gonna be painting away. So when I do get into painting, I paint for at least five hours at a time. Yeah. But there are like, I mean, when I was painting the Serpent series, so the girl behind me, when I was painting them, I was painting like every single day, almost all day for a month. And then there are also weeks where I'm painting maybe a few hours here and there. And it's like something that, I don't know, it's just, it's always changing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it's what so interesting. You? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I'm kind of the same, you know, well, recently, like, uh, basically in, in 2020, I set up a system to where I do office work Monday and Tuesday. And I really weirdly enjoy the office work, which is like making proposals and like sketches and then like doing stuff to my website. And then mm -hmm. I'll focus, I'll leave Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's usually Saturday to paint. And then yeah. Sunday is kind of a try to rest day. So that's like my like, Thing. But yeah, I don't like to paint longer than seven hours in a day. Yeah. I just think it, the quality gets less and it's just forced and I don't want to because basically I painted for um, Bass Pro Shops for a long time and we did a minimum of 10 hours a day, six to seven days a week. And I'm like, I just don't want to do that anymore. It was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good training. Like it was really good yeah. practice. Yeah. But yeah. So I think it's so interesting to hear all these different artists and like every, every time I ask someone, nobody has a straight answer to. So it's not frustrating at all. It's just how it is. Yeah. And it's like when you become an artist too, it's, it's not all just painting either, right? Like you start to realize how complex so many things are, whether it's social media, whether it's marketing, whether it's client relationships, whether it's trying to get new business, whether it's trying to like 
design or whether it's trying to gain more skills, you start to realize like, oh my God, like this all takes so much time. So the cool part about being a full-time artist is you get to decide when you want to do those things. Like if you want to try to do a little bit of it every single day, or if you want to like bulk your days together, be like, these are the days I paint. These are the days I do admin work. Yeah, for sure. I love the whole freedom aspect of it. I just, uh, I couldn't go back to a normal job of somebody telling me Same. when I could take, take lunch. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, I made the decision. I was like, there's no going back. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I remember there was like a slow period when I transitioned from like working for Bass Pro to like getting clients on my own a lot. And I was just like, I'm not going to do any other job. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this that. is the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so could you talk us through your painting process? Are there any methods or techniques you picked up? Yeah, so um, I would say my painting process is trying to get like, trying to have some sort of inspiration or connection with the piece that I'm making first. Uh, okay. Second would be designing it. And then third would be just painting it. So okay. I don't know if this is going to completely answer a question of what method or technique have I learned, but yeah. I would say learning Photoshop has done wonders for me. I, because if you're going to spend hours, days, weeks trying to learn like a new style of painting or trying to complete a big painting, um, you're going to end up using a lot of resources, a lot of products that end up being expensive. Okay. You're going to use I up think, a lot of time um, to try to just like hopefully get an end result that you want. Is this frozen? Can you hear me? Um, I think I was frozen. Sorry. Um, it, it was like acting super weird there for a second technology. Oh, okay. Um, could, sorry, could you just uh, answer that again? I'm sorry. I just, I want to yeah. make sure it's included in the podcast. <laughs> no worries. Um, okay. so I would say that Photoshop was a big game changer for me and it really helped me start to learn like different proportion sizes or like different color palettes that I enjoy, different techniques that I could bring to my paintings without needing to use all my products or all my time or all my like resources and canvases trying to actually paint it first. Um, so designing it and then being able to bring it to a canvas for me was a really big, like it was pretty monumental of being able to like make pieces like the one behind me. Because if I try to just go off of a whim, then like I could have something pictured in my mind, but I don't exactly know how to bring it to the canvas or it'll just take me so much longer to get there. Okay, um, yeah. So, yeah, I would say, like, that would be the biggest thing that I, I learned, like, the biggest thing that was important for me to be able to use my time more effectively. And it ended up working out to, like, get me more jobs as well, which I didn't realize would be the case at first. Like, I did a mural for a bar restaurant on 6th Street in Austin. And then they reached out to me a few weeks later and they were like, hey, like, you know, we have a few more projects, like wondering if you'd be able to help us out with them. And all of them were graphic time. And like, I was able to take advantage of that opportunity as well. So I think like, yeah. That was a, a big thing for me. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure it just got better. It, yeah. Like, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It was like kind of messed up, but we'll just kind of keep going with it. <laughs> um, just internet. <laughs> um, so yeah, I bet like the first thing I was thinking too, is like when I use my iPad and I can literally just like tap twice and it's like undo, you know? And so like, there's so much time that just gets saved. Whether it's, if you're painting it and you want to undo it, you're like, oh, I got to paint over it, wait for it to dry, like try it again, do a layer. And yeah, but with Photoshop or any kind of computer program, it's like, it's almost just stupid spoiled of just yeah. like what we can do. And so I never really thought about that. That would have come in handy. And my recent one, I painted a whale in the clouds and I just could not figure it out. I was just kind of like going back and forth with the colors and because using like a, a, a bunch of different reference photos because there's no like reference photo of whales and clouds really and so <laughs> I'm like man I would have saved a lot of time doing yeah. that on a photoshop first yeah. so that's a really good tip 
And I am like a big believer that there is no substitution for being able to see artwork like in the flesh, right? Like a, a painting is just a painting, like no digital design or artwork is going to compare. Um, but at the same time, like when you're learning something out and especially if you want to make, take the jump and doing this full time, you can make digital designs and sell them on Etsy and get an income, right? Like while you start to figure out or like get a clientele base of, of people who actually want your paintings. Yeah, very true. Uh, what is the one thing you don't like to paint without? Uh, so a binge worthy show. Okay, like a like a Netflix <laughs> Netflix show. Yeah. yeah, so I can't tell you how many times I've watched Friends. I can't tell you how many times I've watched Sex in the City. My boyfriend oh. jokes all the time. Like, I wish I knew anything as much as you know Sex in the City trivia. Like, <laughs> I love I, Sex in the City. <laughs> I made the mistake of starting to get into Vanderpump Rules. Have you ever seen it? No, but I know what it is. Yeah. Oh my god! I was like, you know what? This is reality TV. I'll be able to paint to this. I spent a week trying to paint and watching Vanderpump, and I like couldn't do it. I can tell you everything that happened in the show. I and mean, then paintings went nowhere. So it has to be a show that like you you don't have to actually watch. So I yeah. I like I just love a binge worthy show in the background, like a feel good show. And uh, material wise, I actually use a lot of Q tips. Oh, what? Yeah, <laughs> I they're like my go to for fixing mistakes, okay. like little lines that I don't like places. I just. I love you. I always have Q-tips on me. Like I always just take it, I'll wet it real quick and I'll just wipe it away. And that's just my thing. <laughs> oh man, I never actually thought about doing that. That would be, that'd be way better than a brush, you know, cause mm -hmm. you could just like, and you could throw it away. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, mo most people use them for the unintended purpose of putting them in their ears anyway. They're not even meant for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I, I think I was like painting something. I had like little crevices and stuff. I was like, oh, like this is difficult. I, I kept messing it up when I was first like trying to paint it, and so I grabbed a Q-tip, and then it just kind of stuck. Yeah, you like I found. And I was just like a, a security blanket. Like <laughs> I just need them with me. Yeah, that, that's amazing. I love that. I love that when I interview artists too, like there's like things like this that I've never heard before, but it's like, ah, that makes so much sense. You're like, that's weird, but cool. But it works, like whatever works. It's so funny because there's like, there's no rule book for artists to do, you know, a, a set thing. Yeah. There's no like exact brush we have to use. Everybody has their own preferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are there any art lessons you've learned the hard way? Um, yeah, I think I'm, I, I think I'm kind of learning like art lessons all the time. I feel like I'm constantly getting like punched left and right of like, oh, like don't do things this way or make sure you're doing this or make sure you're doing that. Uh, but it, it really comes down to like balancing of time. I, uh, because I'll find myself being like, okay, cool. Like I need to, I need to organize the posts that I want to put on Instagram and Facebook or like listings that I want to put on my website and I'll block out a half hour or 45 minutes. And then three hours later, I'm like, like, oh, no, like, I need to change this on my website. I need to do this. Like, these <laughs> captions are taking longer than expected. And I think, like, going back to, to taking control of my morning was really big. Like, waking up in the morning, I'll have, like, my big teacup and, like, I'll like while I'm drinking my tea, eating my breakfast, I'll actually write down things that I did the day before that I was really proud of. And then I'll write down projects that I need to complete and then things that I could do today to help me get closer to achieving them. And that's really helped because even if I can't get to everything on my list, which I never get through everything on my list, I will knock down like the main priorities on that first. And that way it's not like, all in complete disarray, but I have like tangible things that I know are getting me closer to my goals. Yes, I love that. And because I was just on a, a call with a student and she mentioned, she's like, there are just so many things to do that like, I mean, Facebook, website, pay this, do that. And like, and she's like, I just need some organization. And so I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll work on that. And that's perfect. That's exact, a perfect example of how 
you know, you can spend hours on a website. Like I have students too. They're, they're like, they're like, well, I kind of have my website up, but like, I don't want, I'm not happy with my bio and this and that. I'm like, just get it up. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be up. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, um, I would recommend Squarespace too. Oh, really? Okay, good. Yeah. It's like everybody asks and I, okay, that's a good, because I use uh, Shopify and like another program and I'm like, eh, they're okay. And so I've always been, oh, what, what do you like about Squarespace? This is coming at an actual perfect time actually from the other yeah. stuff that we're doing. And like, this is not a plug either, but like mm -hmm. they just keep everything so easy. Their whole like shtick is just keeping things really simplified. I tried doing WordPress and it was, it was so intense and things kept breaking and I kept having to communicate with them. It would take days to resolve and it was just a complete mess. And at one point, like I asked them for a refund. I was like, I don't even have a website up. It's been like two months. Like this isn't getting fixed. Like, can I please just get a refund and try something else? And they were like, yeah, like, I'm sorry, like here. And I saw a bunch of people on YouTube, like recommending Squarespace. So I tried it and it's, I had my website up like within that day. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Squarespace. There it is. It's coming in a perfect time. You have no idea. I'm about ready to do like a website thing for all introductory students on what they should use. And I did a bunch of research on them and Squarespace was at the top. So yeah, this yeah. Is it. It's just like, it's super easy. They have awesome templates and like, yeah, you'll be able to set it up. Perfect. Thank you so much for those tips. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite past project? Um, yeah, I would, I would say it was the Serpent series. So Viper behind me was the first painting I did on a large canvas. And I, I remember it was a pretty monumental moment for me that I was like, I was like, holy shit, like I can, like I started taking myself a little bit more seriously. I, I was posting art and I was kind of like, oh, like, well, we'll see like how this goes. I'm just trying to learn all these things at once. There's so many people who are so much better than me. Like, I don't, I don't know how I'll compare, but when I started the Serpent series, it was something I did for myself and it didn't really matter. Like if I sold them or what happened to them or like what people thought it was like, I started painting it and I was like, I connect with this a lot. Like, I really love this and it inspired me to do like more and more and more. And it, yeah, I would say like that was my favorite and most important past project. Oh, I love that. And I love your style of portraits too. That would be the style that I would do. The one right behind you. It's just yeah. like colorful and black and white too. Like mm -hmm. it's just, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> how many, exactly. how many did you do in this series? So the series was nine. Oh, wow. And like nine, like decent sized canvas. How long did it take you to do them? Yeah. So all the, all the girls in the serpent series are all, uh, three by four feet and oh, wow. it depended. I mean, all of them would take like at least three to four days to complete. Some of them have taken like much longer, like weeks to complete. It just depended on detail. And yeah. also like while I was painting them, I was also trying to do other things like still learning design, still trying to like sell pieces and still trying to like make commission pieces. But yeah, that was. Well, uh, what was your inspiration for that? Um, I, yeah, I would say like, so when I picked up art as a hobby initially, um, it was one thing, but when I started to make, like when I decided I wanted to like make a business out of it, like, I truly believe that you need a little bit more of a deeper connection to what you're doing. Otherwise you're just doing it for money and that I would have never left my job in the first place. So what I used to spend a lot of times in hospitals and the walls are like so white and so sterile. And so I want to bring more vibrancy and color to those types of spaces. And so mm -hmm. when I painted Viper, I was like, wow, like I think I could actually do that. So that was, that was the connection that I think I have with it. I love it. And you had a, you had a goal and you had, yeah, just the inspiration behind it. And it turned out beautiful. That's so fun. <laughs> so, um, okay. so um, where do you get the majority of your sales? Like, I think that's the number one question everybody asks. They're like, okay, so like, how do I become an artist? Like, where are these people coming out of the blue to 
uh, commission people? Yeah, so I have an answer for this one. It is mostly social media, which probably isn't surprising because I think that's how a lot of artists in our day and age are able to sell their work. Um, it's Instagram has been great. Ironically enough, like I didn't think Facebook would be able to do the same, but I recently started getting on Facebook and that's been pretty good too. Um, but mixed with social media, like I don't think it's just posting pictures. I don't think it's just like putting it out there. Like, yes, that's a first step and, and that's a great place to start, but being mindful about it too. Like you need to have the lighting. You should like, if, if you need to, you could download apps or edit pictures to make your whites whiter, like, <laughs> yeah. like a Colgate commercial, but it's really true. And so when you look at an Instagram page like yourself, or when you look at people like Kim Rose or Casey Lang, who was on your podcast a few weeks ago, like yeah. when you got, when you look at your guys' profile or your feed, like it looks like a catalog. Yeah. Right? And so when I started taking a little bit more, when I started taking more measures with my Instagram and like putting more care into the pictures that I was posting, that is actually when I started getting hit up a lot more about like art. Yeah, it's so true. Like it, anytime anybody posts something and it has bad lighting or something, I'm like, mm. <laughs> and it's like, just like whiten your whites just a little bit. And really truthfully, like whenever our, I invite artists to come on the podcast, like you, the first thing I do is go to your, their Instagram profile. And I'm looking at the thing in the whole and just seeing like who they are as a person from that, that like nine photos that I see first. And like, it, however, if they're all cohesive, if they all look, you know, just good together and individually, like I am one to judge. I'm such a judger on like somebody's Instagram feed and it has a big thing into where if I invite someone on the podcast or I don't and because mm -hmm. it just kind of like it almost looks like you like you have your shit together or you don't <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's like that's a really good point it's um it like it's not enough to just be an artist I I truly believe that the best artists have a really strong brand behind it yeah so definitely if someone does look at your page they should know what they should expect to get and if you could keep it consistent or if you could keep a theme, like, I think it's only going to work out in your favor. For sure. So do you have any tips for keeping it consistent? Because I know as artists and myself, too, like, we're, all, especially if you do it all these different colors, we're all over the place. Like, do you have any good tips for how to, how to keep it cohesive and consistent? Yeah. So um, something that really helped me is using the same, uh, the same filters on every single picture that you post. I don't use a specific like filter. I'll edit like each thing, like the contrast, exposure, whatever. But I'll do it. I'll do it the same for each picture. Okay. Yeah. So like uh, uh, of, of the of the contrast, of the highlights, and then just like making like sure there's like black and white in yours, or is it just kind of like up for color. Yeah. So something that I've been trying to focus on more is like having a dark post and then having a light post to make some sort of like checkerboard effect eventually, yeah. uh, which I think will be cool. But whatever picture I am putting on there, like I'll still put exposure. These numbers aren't right, but like I'll still put exposure to like 17 and contrast at 26. And that way, like whether it's light or dark, like the whites kind of look this like they look similar the blacks look similar the colors look similar yeah that, that's a great tip and even just like even when I'm doing mine and myself like I'll look at and I'll see like one photo can be a bit cooler like the the mm -hmm. whites are a bit bluer and sometimes it just depends on where you're taking it like the whites are warmer and that just looks so opposite and it's just such a weird transition that you can do like with, with the the saturation on there just taking it from warm to cool and that way just so or neutral to make sure they're all like kind of the same yeah there's a, just... there's another artist who does it really well too her name is uh casey paintings oh yeah <laughs> and she does like when you look at her feed it's just like all bright whites all like bright teals or bright blues and yeah. the teals and blues always look the same in every picture so yeah. she's great <laughs> yeah 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 she's and she's awesome. always like looks super freaking cute in all of yeah, them I'm like girl you do you pay do you look cute every day like, when what you pay like, <laughs> yes. yeah she's awesome I love it <laughs> okay so is there uh or what future art plans and goals do you have is there what's coming up what's in the works what are you working on right now 
Yeah, so right now I'm working on the highlighter series. So that's a lot of portrait work with a lot of neon colors accenting those pieces, which is fun. And then after that, I'm actually going to be working on a Urban Decay series. So moving a little bit away from portraits and going into abstracts. Ooh, that'll yeah. be fun. What inspired that? Just seeing a bunch of different ones and thing you want to try it out have you tried it out already or what's going on yeah so we started trying it out already I think I not the post I had today but the one before that it was like I started getting into it um but it's more like I like I'm still working it out exactly what it's going to look like so right now I have canvases all over my studio floor like all of them have just like random splatters of paint all over them so <laughs> we'll still see like how I fine-tune it but ultimately, like, a lot of the artwork that I've been making is portrait work. It has a lot of attitude behind it. There's a lot of, like, black and whites with hints of color. But I wanted to do something a little bit different that was more muted and could be, could bring a space, a different type of vibrancy without being so loud and without being, mm. like, so aggressive. Yeah, for sure. Do you, do you follow us, Sophie T. Art, her abstracts? are really loud really yeah. bright but she's she's cool she just has such a such a personality i think you'd like her sophie t art right. um, to check her out yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> okay so last question is there any advice you'd give artists who want to make art their full-time career but just don't know where to start um i would say starting out with um uh, like if you if you want to do it full-time and you're just like nervous or you don't know how to get started start making small goals that you can you think that you could achieve whether that's like let me start posting to my instagram three times a week let me make an instagram that's just specific to my art uh let me try to reach out to five other artists to get advice like coming up with smaller goals of things that you think you need to gain the confidence to be able to do it full time and just start making moves on that because each time you do it and you start to realize that like when you set a goal, you can hit it, then you'll gain hopefully confidence enough to be like, all right, like maybe I should just like take the jump and do it on my own. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's definitely a building block effect, mm -hmm. almost. And I love how you mentioned too, like reach out to artists who you could get advice from because that is just gold. Like just just talking to someone, but like like we are right now, and just getting mm -hmm. advice from you and everybody who has been there, done that. Whether it's you know use Q-tips or like just getting whatever you know, it's just that is so gold. Which is why I started this podcast, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you're a great example of all of this, and you. Uh, you've started in less than a year and you're doing awesome and you have so much like insight to to give already in in, in your art career and you're still in the beginning and so I, maybe we should do a, a follow-up here in like two years to see where you're at and like yeah, a, another interview <laughs> i would love to do one of these where someone actually interviews you oh okay yeah, like, okay yeah, yeah maybe like we people probably have so many questions like we should definitely <laughs> set that up Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely open. We actually just did one last week where um, one of the past podcast guests interviewed me about TikTok specifically, not really like broad thing, but like a, a very specific way. And I was like, let me tell you all the things yeah. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, it was so nice to meet you. You're you're so outgoing and you, you come across even oh, on the screen like that. You're just I can just tell you're just like, let me sell you in the most genuine way. And so um, if I am ever you're in Austin, Texas, you said? Yeah. We're actually down there all the time. My my husband went to school at UT. No so way. we yeah we go there and visit all the time so the next time i'm down there i'm definitely gonna reach out and see yeah, if you want to hang definitely out grab a drink or something yes for sure okay awesome That'd be a blast. <laughs> all right well thank you so much again and we'll keep in touch and uh the podcast episode will come out one week from today and i'll email you and let you know okay appreciate it thanks so much yeah. for your time andrea no problem see ya okay bye